Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this multi-part series, we're going to be taking a look at the new simulation nodes in Blender 3.6. There are a couple of ways we can go about moving objects. If we just have a single object, like this cube, and we want to move it, then we could use the Transform Geometry node inside of our simulation to affect its movement. Here, I could add a Geometry, Transform Geometry node, and translate it, say, 10 millimeters in the X direction. If I play my animation, you'll see that for each frame, the cube moves 10 millimeters to the X. Of course, something simple like this could have been done before simulation nodes by simply changing the translation based on the frame number. So let's see how we can use the simulation zone to add more interest. We want to keep track of how fast our object is moving, and we want it to go in a specific direction. So we'll need to keep track of the velocity of our object. If we open our end panel and click on the simulation input, you'll see that we have something called simulation state. These are variables that we can use that are kept for each iteration of the simulation. We want to keep track of the velocity of our object. So we'll use a 3D vector to keep track of this. We'll go ahead and rename this to velocity. And we'll use our velocity as the change in our translation for each frame. So here I can set the velocity to one and then plug that velocity into the output velocity. So the velocity remains unchanged. At the beginning of the simulation, it's one. It uses that to transform the geometry but then it also sets the output velocity as 1, which will then be used at the beginning of the next simulation loop. So let's run this to see what happens. That works as we expected. But what if we want this to speed up or to accelerate? Well, that means our velocity needs to change with each frame. There's a path that our velocity variable takes, and we can simply add a node along that pathway so that for each frame, we can use the previous velocity and make a change to it. A simple thing to do would simply be to add velocity. So if I add a utilities vector math node and I add say 0.1 to my velocity for each frame and I start my velocity at zero, this means on frame one there will be no movement and my velocity will be changed to 0.1. On frame 2, now my transform will go 0.1 and my new velocity will be 0.2. And so this will increase with every frame. So our speed should start slow and increase as it goes. Let's play and see it. Of course, there's no limit to how high our velocity will get here. And so we may need to limit our velocity to a certain level. We could do that by duplicating this vector math node and changing the type to minimum. And here we could put in whatever we wanted the top end of our velocity to be. So say this should only get up to a speed of two. Now, if the incoming vector here is greater than two zero zero, it will choose two zero zero instead. So the cube starts moving and speeding up, but once it gets about 20 frames in, it continues on at the same velocity. Of course, if you're moving this in more than one dimension, you'll need to compare the length of your vectors in order to see what your current velocity is, rather than just on one axis like I'm doing here. You'll have noticed there's one more output of the simulation input, and that is this delta time output. Delta time is a calculation of how much time has elapsed since the last frame. This is really helpful when working with things like velocity and acceleration, because you won't know exactly how many frames per second your animation is going to run if you're running it in real time. Or perhaps if you change the frame rate of your animation, you wouldn't want to have to go in and change all of your velocities or accelerations. You'd want them to be constant. So we can use delta time to scale our velocity based on how much time has elapsed. Delta time is expressed in seconds, 
or more to the point, in fractions of seconds. So if we multiply values by delta time, we'll get the fractional amount that should be added instead of per frame. So for instance, if our maximum velocity is actually two meters per second, not two meters per frame, then we could simply multiply what we're adding here by our delta time. So if only a tenth of a second has gone by, then we only need to add a tenth of that acceleration. So if I add in a vector input and have this be what I want my acceleration to be, 0.1 meters per second per second, and I duplicate my add and change it to scale mode, I can scale this vector by the delta time and use that to add to my velocity. So now my acceleration has been scaled by the time. In a similar way, when I go to transform my geometry, I don't want to transform it my full velocity per second, I want to transform it by the amount of time that's actually passed. So here, I can scale my velocity by delta time. Now, of course, you'll notice this seems like it's going very slow. That's because my animation is running at 25 frames per second. And before, I was using 2 as my maximum velocity per frame, not my maximum velocity per second. Technically, this is running 25 times slower than it was before. So I might want to increase my acceleration rate and my maximum velocity. So there it is. I hope you're finding this series helpful, and I hope you learn a thing or two about simulation nodes. I want to give a quick shout out to all my Patreon supporters who are making content like this possible. If you want to join my Patreon, the link for that's down in the description. Again, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.